what you're looking at is a complex number with modulus 1.02, so nearly 1, just a bit bigger, and it's pointing off in that direction. Don't worry about what angle it is. Now, let's raise it to the power of 2, and then 3, and then 4, and then 5, and then 6, and then 7. I'm going to keep raising it to those powers. We're going to go all the way up to the power of 140. And you can see what raising that complex number to those powers does. Pretty cool. So welcome to De Moivre's theorem, which lets us raise complex numbers to powers. Now you might already be able to figure this out uh, because we already know how to multiply two complex numbers together in polar form. So here's our formula for multiplying complex numbers in polar form. Now what happens if we're raising to the power, say the power of 2 or the power of 3? Well, let's just try raising to the power of 2. All right, so find z squared if z equals r cis theta. All right, so... We're multiplying z by itself. So to do that, z1 times z2, we're doing z1 times z1. So we're going to have to multiply um, the modulus by itself. In other words, square the modulus. And then cis theta, well, we're going to have to add, because it's theta1 and theta1, right, because they're the same ones. We're going to have to add them together. And theta plus theta is the same as 2 theta. All right, so what about like z cubed? Well, that'll be r1 times r1 times r1, which is r cubed. And theta plus theta plus theta would be 3 theta. All right, so you can probably figure out the, the rest of that. So now we can just jump into De Moivre's theorem, the formula. So De Moivre's theorem says that if you've got a complex number in polar form and you want to raise it to a power, it's going to be equal to um, the modulus to the, that power, cis, uh, the angle multiplied by whatever that power was, as long as those powers are integers. Um, all right, we can just do it now. All right, so first one, evaluate cis pi on 3 to the power of 9. Now, we can sort of think of that as 1 cis pi on 3 to the power of 9. So what's that going to be? That's going to be equal to... 1, the modulus to the power of 9, cis uh, 9 times pi on 3. Now, obviously, 1 to the power of 9 is 1, and cis 9 pi on 3 is the same as 3 pi. Now, we can um, move 3 pi around, so 3 pi is pi, 2 pi, 3 pi. So that means that this is the same as 1 cis pi. Now, the question sort of says evaluate, so hopefully that gives you a clue. We can expand this to be uh, cos pi plus sine pi i. Cos pi is um, negative 1, and sine pi is 0, so 0 times i is 0. Um, our answer is negative 1. Another example up here. Um, now, I'm just going to leave the top as it is for now, cis 7 pi on 4. Now, the bottom, that's cis pi on 3 to the power of 7. Now, again, we can think of this little 1 out the front. So it's 1 to the power of 7 and then cis 7 times that. So it's just 1 to the power of 7, which is 1, and we end up with cis uh, 7 pi on 3. Okay, and now we have uh, two uh, complex numbers in polar form divided by each other, and we can um, now just use our division rule to do that. So that's going to be equal to uh, 1 divided by 1. Just write it out there, don't really need to. Cis, and then 7 pi on 4 minus uh, 7 pi on 3. Uh, and the 1 over 1 is just 1, so we can just write cis there. Now, both of those are going to be have to over 12 if we're going to be able to do this. Uh, so it's 21 pi minus uh, times 4, 28 pi. And now we have cis 21 pi minus 28 pi is 7 pi, or negative 7 pi.
over 12. We can't sort of bust that up further. We can't jump in here and start mucking around because 7 pi and 12 isn't one of those nice, neat uh, little um, fractions of pi that, that we've got some values for. So we're sort of finished there. Tick. Tick. Last example here, it's one of those ones where, well, De Moivre's theorem only really works when they're in polar form, and I've been given it in Cartesian form. So my first step here is to convert uh, 1 plus i and 1 minus root 3i into polar form. Now I'm not going to make you sit through that. All right, so I've converted 1 plus i into polar form. I've converted 1 minus root 3i into polar form, uh, and they're both being raised to the power of 5. Um, now, from here, we can use De Moivre's theorem. So it's root 2 to the power of 3. It's cis 3 times pi on 4. All over 2 to the power of 5. Cis uh, negative, 5, negative 5 pi on 3. All right, uh, so that's going to be, uh, that can stay as 2 root 2. And now we have cis 3 pi on 4. And that can stay as it is because that's, that's, that's right. That doesn't sort of change much. Uh, 2 to the 5, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Cis uh, negative 5 pi on 3. That feels right. That's uh, less than negative pi. Actually, no, that's all the way around the circle. Pi and 3, 2 pi and 3, 3 pi and 3, 4 pi and 3, 5 pi and 3. So that's actually the same as positive pi on 3. All right. Uh, so 2 over 32. So root 2 cis 3 pi on 4 over 16 cis pi on 3. Now from here you've got uh, a complex number in polar form divided by another complex number in polar form so we can use our division rule to finish this off. We can do root 2 over 16 and then cis 3 pi on 4 minus pi on 3. And we're going to get another one of those over 12s, cis, um, over 12, minus over 12, 4 pi, um, and 3 times 3 is 9 pi. The final answer, root 2 over 16, cis, 5 pi on 12. All right. All right, that's De Moira's theorem. That's how we're going to raise complex numbers to powers. But now that you've seen it in action, take one more look at uh, this, this picture here. We had a vector. We had a vector with a modulus, oh, sorry, a complex number. We had a complex number with a modulus of 1.02. Now, if I raise that to a power, that 1.02 is going to be raised to a power, first to a power of 2, then 3, 8, 9, 20, it's getting slowly, slowly bigger. Now, what's happening as it moves around the circle is that theta is being doubled and then tripled, and then in this case, multiplied by 33, and then multiplied by 54. It keeps rotating around that circle as that theta keeps getting multiplied by another one. So there's how De Moivre's theorem manages to create this nice little spiral of complex numbers in the R-grand diagram. That's it.